John Howe, I'll start with John Hagel, John Seeley Brown, professional bomb throwers. <laughs> so you've written a book about the great transformation, the great shift, these revolutions going on all around us. At the same time, there's a great shift in economics. There's a great crisis in the world economic system and in Washington, D.C. How do those crises, the crisis in D.C., the crisis in the global economic system, and your theories about the power of pull and the great shift, how are they connected? Well, I think it's very interesting, the, the whole mindset that we've evolved, uh, certainly here in the U.S., and I think more broadly globally, uh, we're so focused on short-term events. So, and understandably, the current economic recession is a very severe one. We're going through extraordinary pressure. And so it's quite natural and understandable that all the attention would be focused on where's the recovery? When is it going to happen? How steep is it going to be? Is it going to be a double dip? All of those important questions. At the same time, one of the key messages in our book is there's a longer term set of trends that have been playing out more than a couple of years, actually many decades. We go back to 1965 and look at how companies have been doing since 1965. And it turns out in the United States, all public companies, not just a subset, but all public companies on average have declined in terms of performance, measuring in terms of return on assets, they've declined by 75%. This has been going on through all the economic kind of downturns that we've had and upturns. Overall, consistently, sustained erosion in performance. There's no evidence of that trend, that longer term trend, leveling off, much less turning around. And yet there's no discussion of that. We're all just focused on this short term economic recession. And again, understandably, but we're making the case that there's a longer term trend here that nobody is paying attention to, and that is, if anything, much more severe than the recession that we're currently going through in terms of its implications for how we do business, how we succeed individually, how we succeed as companies. Only now, when you begin to see people seeing that we're struggling to kind of recraft the old economy, is there even any terminology in the form of like a new normal? People begin to say, well, maybe there is something more fundamental going on beneath the surface structure of what our current ec economists look at. And the structure of this new normal actually probably comes from the big shift we talk about in this book. So I think that we were a little bit ahead of the game to actually get at not the surface phenomenon, but what's, going hap what's happening much beneath that, that this surface phenomenon is, is basically misleading us about. So trying to solve this problem here may delay looking at something much more fundamental here. And I think that's what part of this book is about, is saying, no, let's peel back the surface, let's look at the deep structure, and let's see how, what's A going on, and B, how we may be able to respond very creatively in ways that actually make us almost more human. John Seely Brown, if you were starting another Xerox park, but a broader Xerox park that would not so much reinvent technology, but reinvent society and economics. What should, what would you be thinking about in terms of the future of banks and the future of government? Are we talking about blowing all those up as well? Well, I, I think we got to be a little bit careful about blowing things up. Uh, well, it's just TechCrunch. We're at. <laughs> oh, I know, absolutely. <laughs> so. just, uh, I know where we are in San Francisco. It's okay. <laughs> the, um, you know, I think you're getting at a very deep issue that actually has brought John and me and some others together. And that is that in the 20th century, um, we thought everything was in technological innovation. Today, the game might be much more institutional innovation. What are fundamentally new ways to operate? What are the constitutions that underlie some of these kind of groups? Think about open source. You think open source is solely an emergent property? And no. Most major open source groups have little constitutions. Uh, they kind of govern how these these communities actually grow, review each other, resolve disputes, all this kind of stuff. Um, and so I think that we're moving into a world in which the institutional mechanisms that define the 20th century are getting more and more out of step with what we really need for parts of economy, parts of the way we want to operate that are much more bottom up, much more emergent, but still need boundaries against which to operate. So we're not just talking about a free-formed, e-lance-type world. We're actually talking about things that, that really do have interesting new types of constitutions. Many of our ideas, by the way, come out of looking at new forms of innovation in China. I think we have a lot more to learn from China than we might first realize here. 
they're doing some institutional innovations, new ways to construct things that are way ahead of some of the things we're talking about here.